But as several of you asked uh, about public involvement, how is it that we can sustain what we have uh, seen happening here so that our elected officials can know that there is, there are, there is concern and that the public uh, wants to be able to provide input in some structured way. What, what can be done in the future to maintain the kind of public involvement we've seen today? Well, as I said, Annapolis did a study uh, last year, which is posted on our website, annapolis.gov, check it out. Um, and that was a public process in which we involved quite a few people. Um, um, so we've already gone through that process. I think most governments, uh, when they enact plans like this, of course, it's very public. Um, there's uh, also the comprehensive plan, which is in the state of Maryland. We have to write them every seven years. We've just finished ours in 09, so the next one is in 16. Um, and that's a two-year process, so in 14 we'll start doing that. And this would be one of the subjects legitimately that would be part of that plan. Uh, so, in terms of public outreach, there are those kinds of institutional things that are built into the system that we have to do. Um, I think also uh, uh, a episodic event, like on the, the scale of Isabel, which was pretty serious to in Annapolis, is a good teaching point. So, when we talk about sea level rise, we say, okay, it's going to go up three or four feet by the end of the century, and Isabel, which everyone can relate to, will be a common occurrence, uh, like perhaps every high tide. I mean, it could get that bad. Uh, and people relate to that. Um, as to whether or not that translates into action, it's, it's again, up to government to acknowledge that it's a problem and to put some funding aside to, to address it. Uh, th this uh, challenge, the climate challenge, is both an immediate uh, challenge because uh, changes are on us now, and and we do we do need to make some uh, some fundamental choices as we go forward. Uh, but it's going to be with us f for a long time, that is forever. Uh, and uh, so, after having been involved in a uh, rather extraordinary, um, because of the talent it involved, National Academy of Sciences. Uh, study called America's Climate Choices that began uh, right at the, the, the peak of, uh, of, of awareness and concern when we were going to the, the nations around the world were going to meet in Copenhagen, come up with an agreement. We had legislation uh, to deal with climate change uh, mitigation by reducing our emissions that had passed one house of, the, of Congress. Um, thinking that we would be too late and that a lot of decisions would be made. Uh, we produced our report and it landed with a thud because uh, it, the, the, the whole attention to the climate issue had been, um, had been lost and confused. Uh, it led me to the personal choice that uh, I need to invest as an educator fundamentally. I need to invest more time and energy dealing with um, uh, helping people at all levels, but particularly young people, the, the people who will inherit this problem and have to deal with it, understand uh, what's going on in this world, why, and so that people can make better choices. And so we've, we've launched a, an effort uh, called Made Clear, which is an acronym, stands for um, a, a program made is the Maryland and Delaware. It's a Maryland-Delaware effort uh, that's going to address uh, education at all levels, but particularly at the K-12 level so that we can integrate the knowledge about the Earth system, about how it's changing into the curriculum as we begin to improve our science uh, teaching within, within our schools. Uh, we have new standards that are coming out. Uh, this will be included in those. We have in Maryland now a new environmental, li environmental literacy requirement so that kids have to meet uh, certain standards in environmental literacy before they graduate high school. Uh, so we want to kind of bring this knowledge into the into the into the uh, into the understanding. Uh, in our own universities, we want to make sure that uh, we don't um, any undergraduate, whether you're a music major, business major, science major, has certain level of awareness about uh, what's happening in the world and why it's changing and and what are the repercussions for us. Um, and uh, so I, I'm investing a lot of time not only dealing with the present decisions and policy, and, and but also making sure that our citizens in, the, in our state uh, have, the, have the knowledge uh, and capacity to make the right uh, choices uh, moving forward for them. 
You know, I, I said uh, the other day in a talk that we are fortunate, uh, we, but also with that fortunate, um, our good fortune, uh, comes an enormous responsibility. Maryland is the most um, affluent, uh, most uh, well-educated, best-educated uh, state in this union, and the most powerful nation of the earth. That's going to help have, have to uh, show leadership to deal with this uh, challenge. So we have a good fortune to have a, a, a government that kind of gets it in terms of understanding what that we need to move forward and on all of these adaptations and reducing our emissions. We have a greenhouse gas reduction act that's in law. We're all try, all struggling to meet it, but uh, we also have to do this because we have to be leaders in our nation and, and in the world. And this invo this is, is going to require a very informed uh, 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 citizenry, you folks but also the young people coming behind you. Thanks.